Okay, James here. So we're back to where we were on our last one, and we're going to continue on. And the next thing we want to do is add the group box, which will group all of these radio buttons together. So we have a variable group, and it's going to equal our new group box. And then what we have to do after this is you go group and add, use the add function in the object. And then you just put the name in. So it's like both RB. And now we can now do this. There we go. So we now want tone. And now, now we have added all these three things to the group box. We want to add the group box to the dialog. So we get a go over here with the D. So this variable up here. And then we add the group to it. And now your group will appear on the dialog. I'm just going to add a space onto the dialog so that when we add something else after this, there'll be like a little gap. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. That's the also fill in tool. I put the bracket the wrong way around. So now we have a dialogue, we have all of these things added to it. Now we need to execute this dialogue so that we can actually see it. And to do this, you need to create a variable. Again, I use RC because it's the one that's been used in most of the examples. Again, you could really use any variable name and you just go D dot EXEC, which is basically execute. And now that's it, your dialogue will run. I'm going to add, I'll show you what happens. So let's save this. I'm just going to add it over here as an extra. So I clicked on this um, icon in the middle for manage scripts. And, and I'm going down in the available scripts and looking what I have. And here's the tutorial add. TH, so I'm going to move that across and that should be added at the bottom. So it's this new icon over here and we have an error, so let's go fix that. And my error is simply I've got the variable name wrong, which is okay. So let's save that, try this again, still doesn't like it, okay, I'm not sure why this doesn't like it, I'm just going to retype the whole word. Here we go. Here are our options. You'll notice that the cancel button, if, although it works there, if you actually had the script doing something at the moment, it would run the script before cancelling, which isn't what you want it to do. So I'm going to show you how to actually make your cancel button work properly. And you use this. I said you can't actually see it in that example, but you'll re you'll find that when you're working, that it will in fact actually run the entire script, which clearly isn't what you want it to do. So, basically, you want 
this to be to return a false. So I'm just going to quickly check how I did it to make sure I get the code right. I've only written this code once. Once I just hit return, I'm going to copy this out of my script and paste it over. Really, this isn't doing anything. This return just breaks it out of the program, and this is just a couple of comments which tells you what's happening. Again, you'll just you'll when you write these scripts, you'll just copy and paste this into all of your projects, and it'll just be something that you use over and over again. So next, now we have a dialog. We need to actually do something with our program so that it does something other than just show up a dialog, which you know isn't that useful. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create an if statement and we're going to check. I've done a double bracket here. We want both RB dot check and we want to know if it equals true, which is a double equal sign. If you use a single equal sign, it'll make it equal to true, which will also then come back as true, but it's also changed the value of the variable, which you don't want to do. Then I use these vertical lines, which are on the same key as your backslash, two of them, and that stands for OR. You can use and and two of the ampersands like that and that equals and what this means is if this value on the left or this value on the right is true so if either one of them comes up as true then we're going to do this if statement if you use an and it requires both of them to equal true for you to do the statement so we're going to check also if tone RB equals true. And another bracket to close it off. And there we go.